Buyer's <laughs> Remorse. Hello and welcome to Buyer's Remorse. I'm Justin. And I'm Darren. On Buyer's Remorse, we subject each other to games that are already in our library but are left unplayed. So, Darren, mm-hmm. what game did I choose for you this time? This one was called Beast Battle Simulator. <laughs> I think I've seen some other people playing this, so that is why. I wanted to see how you would react to this one. What did you think of Beast Battle Simulator? <laughs> uh, I don't know why I got this game. I don't know where I got this game. As with all uh, most of the other titles that we've discussed on this podcast here. But when you when you first said, oh, you got to play this, I was like, oh, no, this is one of these ones, isn't it? It's... One of these boring games where you have to fight armies against each other, which I'm just not into that. Like, you know, what did you call them? Those like real time strategy games, like. But that's not what this is. Not really, but it's a simulator. So you're basically just. My understanding, anyway, was yeah. that you would just be putting in the parameters for the fight and yeah. then sitting back and watching it happen. Yeah, and that's pretty much what it is. So I was completely wrong about it because. In the end, man, this game was so much fun. <laughs> um, the graphics, though. Tell me about the graphics, because the pictures don't look great. They're, I mean, they're not bad. I mean, they're about a PlayStation One. 2 level, maybe. <laughs> um, but no, they're not, they're not terrible. But the, what, what is terrible is the, like, the movement mechanics of them. They're really just, like, really stiff. They're, like, almost... No, I wouldn't go as far as to say they're like South Park cardboard cutouts just deep, deep, deep moving along, but they're they're pretty bad. All the environments where you put your characters down, they're all about this far off the ground. They're all on your screen, they're a couple of inches off the ground. So they don't actually walk on the terrain. They just kind of float there. <laughs> uh, that probably looks great for the birds. Yeah, wow, well, yeah. Um, but yeah, not, just nothing makes sense. It's silly. It's It was a lot of fun. Um and penguins rule so penguins. <laughs> yeah. um so basically yeah so you got to fight it's just what would happen uh if you put you know 200 penguins versus uh 50 warthogs you know who's gonna win um and so you got sandbox mode there's a lot of modes to it which is good because it keeps it fresh and there's also one mode that i don't really like at all um but there's a sandbox mode where it's just like choose a terrain, you got two sides, and you've got infinite money, so you can really like just drive your FPS into the dirt with this. Cause I filled this whole screen with like five thousand Velociraptors and I got like two frames a second. So yeah, it's pretty bad. Or you can so yeah, the sandbox mode is a lot of fun. And then they've got uh you can choose your yeah, like I said, you can choose your environments. They've also got a couple of things where there's a football game that you can play. And so they've got like a big football pitch and there's three different sizes. So there's one for like small creatures, which works, they say works best for small creatures, a medium sized one and a large one that works when you're like doing, I don't know, a team of um, like uh, T-Rexes or something like that versus elephants. Um, but the football was a lot of fun. It's the first to three, bo- it's the first to three goals. And do they know that they're playing a of. soccer game? <laughs> like, do they actually go for the ball, or do they just all go forward? No, no, they do go for the ball. They're, the AI is trained to to go for the ball, but they don't always hit it in the right direction. Uh, they try to. It's, it's. I don't know man, how to describe it. It's functional, but it's bad. <laughs> Does the ball also float inches above the... No, the ball is on the ground, actually, but the ball gets tossed around everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And... Yeah, there's this weird thing. There's a compute. There's a glitch with this as well, where it's almost like they've animated the models, and they've got these. Sometimes when something's moving, there'll be this long line. You know, like I don't know anything about programming, but I imagine. I imagine that all the characters in the game are on puppet strings, and so there's bits where you can see all those lines are drawn, like how to move. I don't know what it is. It's just a weird thing. <laughs> Do they also clip a lot through each other? No. No, that's decent enough. They, they, their hitboxes are pretty good. Okay, that surprises me because that was the number one thing. I thought that they would just right. be all clipping through each other and you wouldn't be able to see what's going on. If they, and if they did, then there'd be no end to the matches. That's the one thing that they took care of was like when they collide, well, 
they have to do damage. I thought the damage would be fine, but I thought that just the way it looked. I would be inside each other. Yeah. Stuff like that. No. <laughs> you can go inside them, like if you're with your. Because basically, you set up the battle, and you then like you're, a, you're just a, a camera. God view yeah. Is- so you're just a camera and you can just like mouse around and you can like, yeah, go into the mouth of the dinosaurs and it's just basically just a hollow cavity inside and stuff like that. But yeah, so you've got the sandbox mode, which is a lot of fun, but I, that was the one I played with last because I liked having the other mode, which was, um, it was a challenge mode. And basically there's 50 A challenges and then 50 B challenges. I don't know why they just didn't do it up to a hundred, but for each level, so you got level one, a and then you've got B and so A will be like um, okay you've you've got they'll give you um, uh, hang on a second so they give you a set amount of money and they give you the enemy that you have to fight and then it's up to you does it start off really small is yeah, it like it one off. chicken no no I mean I think one of the first fights was like you've got an army of pigs and you have to take down a Tyrannosaurus Rex and so um, obviously pigs can't take down a T-Rex so what do you do you mount uh, flamethrowers to their heads. Oh, I didn't realize flamethrowers <laughs> were an option. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got basically at the bottom of the bar, you've got your animals on the far left. So you've got a bunch of different animals, everything from dogs all the way up to um, sharks and, um, you know, just like elephants and stuff like that. you got a whole bunch, maybe, I don't know, maybe 30 different animals to pick from. Warthogs, donkeys, kangaroos. Um, no chicken, surprisingly. Seagulls. Um, you name it, it's probably there. Be prepared for Battle Beast Simulator 2, where they... Now with chickens. Yeah, now with chickens. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so next to that, you've got your dinosaurs. Your dinosaurs go from um, compies all the way up to... I don't even, I don't even remember the name of that. This, there's this gigantic one. It's not... It's not a, it's not the one with the big neck, but it's it's huge, and yeah, that's yeah, that can pretty much annihilate everything. Um, and then next to that, after your animals and your dinosaurs are done, then you've got your gear, and so gears things like you can do laser beams, uh, flamethrowers, cannons, shotguns, and that might be it actually. I think there's one more. Um, and then next to that, you've got turrets, and I didn't really use turrets that much because. They just seem to get wasted really quickly and they cost far too much. They're n- nothing compared to penguins with laser beams attached to their heads, man. Penguins are deadly in this game. Because are they the, deadly on their own or only once you attach laser beams to them? They're heads? deadly on their own because how they move, they're just OP. You know, I found out really early on because it was just like, well, what if I do this? And it's like, oh, yeah, this is, this is the cheat key. Because <laughs> what happens is they've got this animation. If they're standing up, they just waddle around, right? And then that's when they get killed. But they don't spend a lot of time upright. They spend a lot of time on their bellies doing the penguin slide. And they just you just can't kill them. And they move, like, really fast. So they're just, like, all these little penguin bullets just firing at the enemy. And if you dub- double that with laser beams on their heads, they're just unstoppable, man. Unstoppable. Well, clearly, they wouldn't be able to slide on probably actual dirt or anything no, they're treating them as though they're on ice the whole time yeah yeah because one of the terrains is desert and it's pretty funny to watch that and sharks as well sharks are crazy in this game like they're so fast they're just like they can they can cross the whole map in about three seconds they're just like and there's like this shark nado of like just sheer terror man it's fantastic so do they treat it as though they're in water yeah yeah. Okay. So the sharks are like they're waddling around, they're like fl- fl- flipping around on land, but when they detect an enemy, they just all kind of surge and like track. There's sharks coming from every side, and it's like pincer attack, and whatever's in the way has no chance. But yeah, but the problem is, so what you find out is penguins are great for that. If you've got a hard level that you can't beat, just throw in, just throw the penguins at them. So does that give you a new respect for? Batman Returns. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, he's called... Yeah, maybe the Penguin is actually quite hardcore, you know? Yeah. Um, but but Penguins cannot play football. They're oh, terrible, they're really at, terrible at the football. So we, because of their movement mechanics, they're just... They're all over the place. Really bad. They, there's like anacondas or like some kind of dinosaur snake thing. I can't remember. It's got a really long name. Um, they're really good at... They're really good at football. Raptors... 
And that's what that's what you want. That's what you need your football team. Isn't there like an American like hockey team or a football team? Basketball. As ah, a basketball, right? Okay. Oh, there you go. I'm sure Raptors are pretty good at basketball as well. Um, In the next game, when they add basketball, we'll find out. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, it's pretty funny because the shark one. The sharks are so funny because yeah, they're out of water and they're absolutely lethal. And you can do the whole Austin Powers thing where you can actually attach laser beams to their heads. Um, and so, not that you would need to because they're just they're insane. They, I. They're more insane than megalodons. I thought megalodons would be really fun because they're basically giant sharks, but actually sharks just waste everything. They're just super, super OP. So, I mean, an army of sharks and penguins, you're just, like, going to take over the world. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah, so there's that mode. There's the challenge mode, which if you... I, I did beat it. Not in the hour that I played. I've gone back multiple times since since, uh, since I was the hour. wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you got a lot of play in that one hour. I think I got through about twenty challenges in about an hour. So that'll give you a scope of how big the game is. Maybe um, are the A challenges, B challenges, different types of challenges? Yeah, yeah. Is so, there maybe a reason why they put the A and B so that the left one is, say, for example, A is no weapons and B is with weapons is there any sort of theme? I didn't notice any logic to it I think the only thing is is that maybe a hundred boxes would have filled the screen up too much and so they went with 50 and just did an A and B I don't know because it's basically you got the panel of boxes off to one side with 1 to 50 and then you got the square which shows you a picture of the map uh, and the enemy that you'll be fighting and then underneath it's A and B and so when you toggle B it'll flip to the next page so like one of them will be um, okay fight against 200 seagulls. I think that's your first mission. 200 seagulls. And then the next one is uh, crush five tanks. Uh, so yeah, is it technology or whatever? It is, I couldn't find any method to the madness. So the challenges are good because they give you a set amount of money, you know the enemy, and you're free to do it however you want. Unless the mission explicitly tells you you have to use... Um, sometimes it'll say like you can only use pigs. Or it's it's... Prey getting revenge on Predator. So it'll be like a bunch of... You can pick any prey animal, but you're fighting against lions or something like that. Um, and that's it. Each each animal has like a DPS and uh, hit points uh, counter that you can see. I don't know if that really helps. I didn't pay any attention to that. I just was like, well, it's penguins all the way down, man. Um, and yeah, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, so when you finish, when I went back and finished the challenges, I finished all of the A challenges, and you get a new guy, and he's called King Penguin. And King Penguin is gigantic. <laughs> and he's got a crown. Um, and yeah. You Do you get other things, or did you get the King Penguin because you use penguins so much? <laughs> Maybe. This is your reward for... I don't know. I never... I know you do see him in the game. Yeah, because you do have to fight King... Like a bunch of King Penguins. I didn't know he was going to be my reward. So I'm really interested. I have not managed to finish the 50B challenges. But I'd be interested to see what you get. But it was nice because I wasn't expecting anything. And King Penguin is... Makes some great screenshots. <laughs> so, yeah. Were there achievements with this game? Cards? I don't think there's anything with it. Yeah, I, I didn't notice any achievements popping up. Uh, I don't think it has cards. So, I think, actually, I think I bought this game on purpose. I remember seeing it because it was quite expensive. I think it's like 10 bucks. Um, and it was one of these things that I bought. I wanted to buy it as a joke. Um, so, I wanted to buy it as a joke, but I was not going to pay $10 for it. I think I got it for one. I got it for like a 90% off and I was like, okay, I have to buy it now. And I've got, I think so far, I've got about four four hours out of it. So that's 25 cents an hour. That's that's great value. <laughs> oh, there's one more mode. This is the mode that I didn't like. And so the, there's a kind of a tower defense mode, which is weird because I usually enjoy tower defense games. Um, this isn't really a tower defense. It's basically you start off in the left side and you've got a big tower and it's got X amount of hit points. And then they're like, we're going to just keep throwing enemies at you um, and so what you, you've got is you've got a big pool of money I probably don't like it because you have to think about it really that's why you got a plan so it's like I'm out but basically you got like let's say you got a million bucks and so 
you've got to survive X amount of waves of enemies, so you've got to buy all your stuff, and then basically you, you create like a bank of animals, and you can attach weapons to them, and then the round starts, and it's like you've, you, every, every one that you summon onto the battlefield to protect your tower costs mana. And so the man is always ticking up, ticks up fairly fast. Um, and then they come in from the right and basically they come in and then they just batter your tower. And I did, I lasted pretty well. And so, yeah, so they just come in and they destroy your tower. There is some kind of cool elements that they've used from like old flash games where you can use the mana to like summon meteor showers or lightning bolts. And you can basically annihilate single targets or you can do like an AOE attack that will take out everyone in this giant circle with the meteor. But yeah, this was the one mode that I didn't like. And it's probably because it's it's more serious and it requires much more thought than I, I have. <laughs> more, way more patience. I think it's also, it sounds like your enemies are coming from everywhere. They, 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 they're only coming from the right side. Yeah, but even still... It's not a limited path like in no, no, they, tower defense. No, no, they can fan out and stuff. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. In a tower defense, you got the line that they that they follow, um, and you'd know all about that. You've been plowing through Adventure Time tower defense. I've not really been plowing through. I've just been wasting a lot of time on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I like tower defense games. They're a lot of fun, and the the balloons ones are great. Um, like way back in the old Flash days, Ninja Kiwi on. Uh, when they had, we, we get they had all the free flash games um but yeah so yeah but this is just like a, a mob basically so it's not really a tower defense it's just like a mob offense um yeah so that's it pretty much beast battle sim is was fun i i, I made a battle between a megalodon and 300 seagulls in a coliseum like what more could you ask for and you can actually move the camera so you can sit where the emperor would sit and then you just watch behold my for my entertainment <laughs> uh yeah good times that leads us towards the end questions so first would be i mean obviously you <laughs> you have played it beyond you said about four hours beyond yeah. already so i don't need to ask about that would you recommend it to me on sale yeah I think you probably, I think you're the type of person that would probably get at least an hour of fun out of it and maybe you'd get bored of it because um, there isn't really much to it. You know, it's not really, there's no real end game of Fortnite. It's, it's no real tower defense. No, but I do think the 50 challenges yeah, might yeah. be worth it. Yeah. If it was only a simulator, mm. then I would get bored very quickly. But if you give me a goal of what I need to do, then that adds something. Yeah. Yeah. So possibly there's that tiny bit of trying to figure this one out. Would you recommend it to everyone, anyone? Yeah. I mean, I would recommend it to people who don't need a uh, a fully polished title. Like there's a lot of bugs, um, but there's nothing really game breaking, but just parts that look really dumb. Like, yeah, when you've got guys that are floating like two inches off the terrain and you, you, those, those puppet string lines and... Um, sometimes the battles AI, there was one battle in particular that took, it seemed to take like 10 minutes just to finish because it was too, the, the arena was too big. And so the penguins were just like sliding way, way, way out there. And it was like taking them forever. And they had to get this one raptor and just like, it was like finding a needle in a haystack. So do you think that this is the type of game that needs a powerful computer to run? Well, I've got a an RTX 2080, and yeah, once I filled it with like when I went into the simulation mode, I did go a little bit overboard. I admit. <laughs> so I guess depending on how overboard you want to go. Yeah, and so I've put like hundreds on each side, and yeah, it just it almost crashed my computer. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you might want to yeah either get get like a good computer or. Just tone it down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so you definitely have played it beyond. Do you plan to finish doing the all the A and B missions? Yeah, definitely. I'll go back and I'll do it. Um, and it's something that it's something it's something silly. It's one of those we've talked about the, these kind of coffee break games before. I think we talked about uh, One Finger or Death Punch. It's one of these games you can just like slam it on for ten minutes, for twenty minutes. Even for an hour, in some cases, if you if you feel you've got the patience, but you could go in. It takes seconds to load up. You could do a mission and then just have a bit, have a bit of a laugh, and then you're done. So, 
What three tags would you give it? <laughs> My favorite part. Um, well, I suppose it is a simulation, so... Right. Simulation. Um, uh, fantasy, I guess. I mean, it's like a fantasy simulation, like, like situation where you can, like... I don't know, it's like... It, you can pit animals against each other that would never, ever encounter each other in yeah, real life. Yeah, that's right. So it's like... I think National Geographic did something like this, where they like they had this series like who would win, and it's like there were lots of those. I think they did it. Fox, the TV channel back in the U.S. I know they did it at one point. They even literally got actual animals to compete against people. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Jesus, to see if the human could win. Well, they put a human up against a bear. Not a bear, but not for, like, fighting. It was, like, races, different ah, kind of races. okay, okay, okay. So, like, a monkey racing across, uh, you know, monkey bars kind of thing. Okay, or, right. Versus a human. And, I thought it was but, like a blood sport. <laughs> but they, no, 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 no. And I think it was a zebra versus a human in a foot race. Which oh, God. <laughs> human got decimated. But they tried to act as though... It was a real sports match, so they would do a talk beforehand. <laughs> like commentary. Here, yeah, here's here's got to be the monkey's strategy. And oh, the, God. <laughs> and the first thing was, must actually realize this is a race, <laughs> because otherwise the monkey could just sit there and just do... Like pick, picking his nose, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, there have been other CG ones where they've pit ridiculous things against uh, each okay. other, yeah. Uh, so you... So, uh, so yeah, so um, yeah, simulation, simulation, fantasy, fantasy. matchup, I guess. Yeah, fantasy, yeah. Uh, and then the last one would just be like, I don't know, maybe just time waster, because that's really what it is. It's just okay. a time waster. Actually, hang on just a second. Wait a minute, I gotta show you this. This arrives just in time for this episode. I have no idea what he's going to get. So I bought a bunch. <clears throat> I bought a bunch of books. Yeah. And they are actually this game. <laughs> who would win? It's who Killer win? Whale versus Great White Shark. Yeah, so I bought all these Lion books. Lion versus Tiger, yeah. Yeah, Jaguar versus Skunk. Spoilers. Jaguar, uh, uh, Skunk actually wins that one. Yeah, <laughs> it's got the dinosaurs. And I didn't, I I think I, I ordered this before I played the game. Well, have you put these into simulation well, to see the if thing. they're right. I think I'm going to have to try it now. So it's like, <laughs> uh, you've definitely got hippos in there. Uh, they've got snakes. They've got, they do have crocodiles. Crocodiles are pretty uh, awesome. Um, a hyena versus the honey badger. That would be good. Uh, but yeah, so there's just a bunch of these books. And it was just, it was so weird because I didn't actually have, I didn't know about this podcast episode, but I'd already bought these books. And then they arrived, I think, like two days ago, I was like, "Whoa, this is this is weird." <laughs> so there you go. I'm gonna have to put some of these into play and see if the books, uh, if uh, if the books actually right or not. But that may be one of your uh, golden moment videos to <laughs> to put on the channel. I'm glad you actually went with those tags. I thought you were just gonna go oh, battle and beast and simulator, <laughs> battle and beast and simulator. Yeah. <laughs> well, that leads to our grand question. Was this a dreaded buyer's remorse or a wonderful buyer's confirmation? Confirmation. <laughs> yeah, confirmation. <laughs> buyer's confirmation. 